Lac du Deux, a lake that holds a very special place in our hearts. And not just for the incredible landscapes this beautiful lake has to offer, but for the lifelong friendships made and forged along the way and the experiences we've shared together as a community. And not to mention the odd big carp or two. Our angling journey at the Mighty Dadur had been a testing one at times, and for this, our final session on this iconic lake was to be no exception. With a whole host of dramas and misfortune along the way, this is the carp life of Dadur finale. Well, you join us on the road for what's likely to be our last trip to the for quite some time. We've put quite a few years into this lake now and uh, some seasons have had better results than others. But this year, we have prime bookings in October. Now, our trip should have started two days ago, but sometime in August, Alan Blair phoned us up and invited us to the Eurobanks finale party. And this was an event that wasn't to be missed. Our brother Reedy smashed his set with MC Fearless and that's the reason now we're actually late and probably going to miss our train. That's actually your fault Claire by the way. <laughs> Always. That was actually your fault. <laughs> but yeah we're heading to the Euro Tunnel now. Um, we've got like 45 minutes to get there which I'm really down we're going to be able to make it. But um, unfortunately the next train after that is uh, 6.30 in the morning. We're probably not going to get on the water today, which means our session is going to be shortened by a further night. In the rush to get to the party, I'd forgotten to fill up in advance. This meant a pit stop was in order and almost certainly guaranteeing we would miss our departure. Well, it's 2.45 and we didn't make our train. Unfortunately, the next one's not until 6.45 in the morning. So uh, yeah, it looks like we're gonna get a few hours sleep in the van. This trip isn't starting off well. And the Duchess, she's just sleeping for it all. Claire! <laughs> wakey, wakey, you're at the tunnel. Oh, that's nice. By the time we boarded the 6.45 train, Claire was feeling rather unwell. So we decided to stop off at her friends for the night, ready to tackle the big lake the following morning. We was up early, out the door and on the road, keen to get to the lake. On arrival, the anglers either side of our spot had virtually set up in our swim. Not wanting the hassle for just three days angling, we decided to go take a look at a couple of other public venues nearby. We're en route to venue number four. We've looked at three other public venues today and uh, they've all been ram jam session. It is big carp season, so I guess it's to be expected, but uh, this last venue is pretty much our last chance. Um, I'm hoping we can get into the night zone, but if not, we're just gonna bivvy up in the day zone and uh, get the rods out first thing in the morning. The last venue was also very busy, with only one spot left on the lake. We set up camp, tackled up our rods and tied some rigs ready for a first light drop.
here is pretty uniform. You can see there's loads of predator fish and whatnot just lurking around off the end of where those jetties are. The bottom slopes away pretty fast, hitting down to a seven meter average once we get down to the flat bottom. Without any features, it's just literally silt seven meters all the way across, which, um, which can be a little bit challenging when it comes to fine spots. But what we've done is spread our baits out. So we've gone from quite close over there, slowly coming out in sort of a diagonal line across. And uh, yeah, we're hoping to intercept some carp as they pass through. This year I've had great success fishing scopic squid alongside tuna and garlic. I find that the smell of the tuna and garlic cuts through the silt when I've been fishing on a soft bottom and it's definitely got me more bites. On the business end of my rod I've been using a 24mm cultured hook bait with a 15mm tuna and garlic pop-up. I found this combination to be deadly this year, especially when fishing in the silt alongside my favourite blowback rig. It's just been the one for me and uh, yeah, this year has been pretty successful. As we're fishing all our lines in such close proximity to each other, I'm actually going to back lead them all down, just to make sure that we don't have any unforeseen disasters. Now that Claire was finally up and out of bed, we set about finding some spots to drop her lines for the day. With all our rods out on the spots, we sat back to enjoy the beautiful scenes this lake had to offer. The angling throughout the day remained pretty quiet, but as the sun began to fade and as we moved into the last hours of light, something truly incredible happened. No jokes. This thing is an absolute monster. I don't know if you can just see how wide that is. Oh my days. Look at it. Hey. That's a rubber big gun. Look. Well done, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, that's 57. Water, half, don't know. Who cares? 57 and a bit, that'll do. <laughs> well, who would have thought this? We, uh, we abandoned our first week on Lacti Dare as uh, the water was really low for the swim we booked and the anglers either side had uh, set up virtually in our swim. So we decided to have a look at another public lake and oh, that is the result. What an absolute beast. I'm super buzzing with this. Oh, I'm over the moon, 57 and a bit pounds. Fought like hell. Oh, love you sweetheart. Banging. These, so happy, baby. These are the best moments. Look at that. Love you. Well deserved, babes. Oh. There she is. Incredible capture. Top buzz right here. Can't explain how I feel. Something incredible. What an amazing creature. The feeling was electric that evening. Who would have thought we would have caught such a big carp on our first day's angling, especially after all the disasters. But now the sun had finally set behind the horizon, it was time to reel the rods in and catch a well-earned night's sleep.
The next morning I was up and out early, keen to get my rods re-tackled up and out on the spots ready for the big carp that were clearly in the area. See on the echo sounder, it's just seven meters of nothingness. Bait fish, predators. Surprisingly, no carp yet, but um, they seem to move in in the later afternoon. What I'm actually doing there is feeling the lead down. Because you're not casting, you can sometimes end up with your rig being in a little mess. So for me, I always like to feel my lead down, just as I would if I was uh, casting from the bank. One thing people don't really actually realise is uh, dropping from the boat you can actually end up with more tangles than, uh, than uh, casting so uh, yeah feeling the bait down for me is an absolute must. Much the same as the day before, the bulk of the day remained quiet. But just as we was about to pack up and go back to the dirt, Claire's rod was away. As I was reeling in my last rods, two left to go, this one went melting off. And what an awesome fight it was. Thank you very much. Gonna get the rest of the rods in now, and off to the dirt. With Claire's carp safely returned, we packed the remaining items of tackle into our van for the drive back to the dirt. We would once again stay at a friend's house before tackling the big lake in the morning. You excited then, Claire? <laughs> well excited. Yeah, this is it. This is going to be our last session on Didier for a little while, so um, we want to try and make the most of it. We've only actually got five days angling due to Claire being a little bit ill after the uh, Eurobanks party and that's uh, taking a slight deviation to another lake as um, the swim we'd booked uh, was a little bit crowded in that area and there wasn't much water. But anyway, we're uh, back on the road, we've got our tickets and yeah, we've got five days of premium weather and if it doesn't happen now, it's never gonna happen. Never say never. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna give it our best shot We've got an idea of how we want to fish the swim. It's a new one to us. We haven't fished it before. So yeah, we're just going to give it our best shot and hopefully Boom. the carp cut to kind. Yeah. Let's do this, baby. Love you. Love you too. Here we are. The Grand Basin. Yes, Claire. We've got a little mission in front of us, haven't we, darling? Always a mission. Yeah, we've got to get the big boat off the roof and all this kit packed into it, plus the tow boat. And then we've got to go on a mission where, Claire? There. There. Right over there, we've got pretty much that whole bay to ourselves. So it comes out to a point. And yeah, we're hoping to intercept a few carp as they pass through, so yeah. We've got loads to do, so uh, without further ado, I'm gonna get moving. Got a nice slipway here. I'm not actually too sure where the slipway ends and the silt begins, so let's take a little walk down first. Try and work out how far down we can go without getting stuck. So yeah, it's looking quite encouraging at the minute to be honest. Nice. Goes all the way to the end, Claire. 
stand the boat up here in the weed. Let's head out from here. I just wonder how soft this is. Oh, this is lovely. Proper dude, uh, mud that. Oh. Yeah. This is not going to be fun, Claire. So here we are all set up at our swim at Lagdy Dare and yeah, it's looking really good. We've got a hell of a lot of water out in front of us and we have so many options, it's ridiculous. On the way through with all our material, we did actually spot a very interesting area on the Echo where we have two points coming out with a deep channel in the middle, which is a really long way. But we've made a few adaptations to be able to present our rigs effectively. We've got a lot of drifting weed and big wind, so we need to be able to hold bottom well. So what we've actually done is cable tied two eight ounce leads together. This should hopefully give us enough traction to be able to tighten our lines up nice and tight and uh, prevent the weed from putting big bows in and moving the lead. I've gone for a double 24 mil tuna and garlic wafter. And uh, yeah, we're gonna fish these over a big spread. Out to our left we have a large area with a lot of tree stumps and carp love hanging out in these areas. We're going to send two rods over there with a subflow just to make sure that our line isn't trailing through the trees and I think that's also a good area for a bite. Well the sun's starting to dip in the sky now so I best get a move on and get these rods out in the water. Heading out across rough water, it wasn't long before we found fish on the Echo. In the shelter bay off the back of the wind, this would be the first spot we dropped our lines. Sort them, they're having it, they're hungry, so let's give it to them. <laughs> Going with my standard baiting approach from this year, which is scope it squid. I've also got some custom white scope it squids and 24s in there, just to uh, try and get through to some of the bigger carp. We managed to get all the rods out on the spots just before dusk and in time to enjoy the last rays of the most beautiful sunset that Lac de Deux is so famous for. The first night's angling passed without event and to be honest I wasn't really too fussed about that. We fish in a huge expanse of water and it can take us a little time sometimes to uh, zone in on the carp or for them to be able to find our bait. So uh, yeah, I wasn't really too fussed, but last night something did happen. Around 12 o'clock I had an absolute melter of a run. As soon as I tightened the clutch and uh, had the rod in my hand, I realized it was a big carp. So I jumped straight in the boat and headed out. The fish ended up towing me approximately 300 meters under four of my other lines. It was 20 minute battle before I decided it must be a catfish. I decided to crank the carp up. As soon as it broke the surface, I realized it was an absolutely huge fish. A massive common, well in excess of 30 kilos, an absolute giant of a fish. Yeah, I decided to start playing it quite softly after that. I did actually see the carp another two times before, um, before it ended up getting snagged around a tree stump. But I always carry a grappling hook in my boat with the second cast of the grappling hook, I was able to actually catch my leader. Um, I then subsequently tried to pull my line through the snag or break the snag, but uh, I was unable to. So I wrapped the leader around my arm and cut the line in the hope that I'd be able to rejoin it back to my main line. But uh, every time I went to complete the knot, uh, the fish pulled on my arm and the knot come undone. And after about five minutes of fuffing around, I decided that I would hand line the fish in probably turned out to be a bit of a mistake that to be honest 
But uh, yeah, it towed me about a good and as I didn't really have much line to give it, I had to literally chase it with the motor. And uh, yeah, it felt like the carp was done and he started coming to the surface. And when he made one last charge and he pulled the hook out of his mouth. Uh, I've been fishing this lake now for like four years, seriously. And I've caught so many small fish in the last couple of years. 111 to be exact, uh, since my last 40 pounder. And uh, yeah, to say I'm burnt is, uh, is an understatement. In fact, I'm burnt, burnt to a crisp. Understandably, I was seriously wounded by the loss of what was certainly a new PB for me. I hoped I hadn't blown my chances as this lake didn't give up its giant residence easily. And with that in mind, I set the rods once again. Set, we sat back and watched the water for signs of carp and prayed for another chance of a doo-doo monster. Three nights in and despite losing a hell of a carp on our second night, we're still fishless. It's really tough angling out here and we've only actually seen the fish show at great distances of above 1100 metres, which is just too far for us to angle for them. I'm going to have a really detailed search today in the bays and the areas around us and uh, hopefully see if I can try and find some carp, but I've got a feeling they've all started pushing out as the water levels drop in. I'm going to do my best with two nights left anything's possible but yeah I've got to give him my best shot to be honest my confidence was at an all-time low but all we could do was try again heading in the direction of a sheltered bay we soon found some interesting structure on the echo a raised area that was most likely a road of some description Thinking it looked like a likely haunting spot for carp, we spread our baits wide and thin to maximise the chance of fish discovering our boilies and ultimately our hook bait. We then dropped our lines with a subfloat attached, feathering down our leads to ensure our rigs were presented perfectly. Our rods were dropped with absolute precision and we could do no more but wait. Later that afternoon we were joined by our good local friends for a bit of a social, witnessing the birds on their annual migration before enjoying the spectacular sunsets this iconic lake is so famous for. Did you get it? This has got to be it this time. Yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah, that's a decent one there. Go on the big end. Pop it 
chunky common. Oh, that's getting up there, that one is. Lovely. Rafted proper hard this trip. And I'm not gonna lie, it has felt punishing at times. But it's moments like these make it all worthwhile. Do we need to go backwards? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, lady. Woo! Well done, Claire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad one, you know. Not bad one, so. Oh, it's not 40 pounder. Yeah? Yeah. Up we go. One, two, three. Oh yes, good one. This one is. Twenty kilos. Seven, didn't I? Forty-four pounds, yeah. Yeah, congratulations, Craig. Well after the last few nights disasters. Something clearly has changed in the matrix. The blank has come to an end with not one, not two, not three, but four carp in total, with two of them being very special captures. With Claire landing a 44 pounder and me going on to capture a 51 pound common. I'm absolutely buzzing to be honest. It's been really difficult and I was absolutely convinced it wasn't gonna happen. But anyway, let's stop rattling on now and let's show you the carp. This is one of four of the carps we caught from last night. The first rod that went was mine at about 2.30 in the morning. God, it was hard work running down that muddy bank. We got in the boat, it was a bit of a battle, but what a reward. I cannot tell you how happy I am. Absolutely buzzing. Well done, darling. Thanks, babe. Mega carp, absolutely mega one. There we go, number two for me. Caught off the same spot where all the trees were using a sub float, the scoping squid culture bottom bait and a tuna and garlic pop up. Lightly baited, this one rattled off about two hours after the first one. Put up quite a big scrap, I thought it was gonna be a bit of a bigger car, but when he popped up, I still wasn't disappointed with beautiful autumn colors like that. Fuck a car. And it ain't over yet. Look at Certainly it. ain't. for a shanty beast. I was really starting to think it wasn't gonna happen after losing that fish two nights ago. And I'm not gonna lie, I was massively wounded. But a small change in tactics yesterday produced this bite. Attaching the sub boat and fishing our rods a little bit closer to the tree stumps. Got the fish feeding with this of one of four bites last night. Oh, what an incredible creature. And a wonderful carp. Proper buzzy. Oh. 
Well, with all the carp safely returned, it's time to get our rods back out. We made a few changes yesterday and clearly that made a difference to our angling. So we really want to try and get those spots dialed in just right today. And uh, yeah, build on last night's success. So I best get cracking and get these rods in the water for the last night. Let me get a sweetheart. Double lead, fishing quite a big distance. The tuna and garlic wafta, cultured 24 mil scoping squid bottom bait. Yeah, I'm hoping that's going to do the do. See quite a few fish on the way out here on the Echo Sounder, so we're hoping that this spot may do us a bite tonight. Let let it be the rock spot. With our rods deployed for the final time, with maximum effort possible and the utmost care to ensure everything was perfect, we sat out to watch the big red blood moon rise, praying for one last shanty beast to end our trip on an ultimate high. Actually, oh, he is a nice one. Yeah, yeah, we keep him. He's decent. He's yeah, he's definitely a keeper, though, actually. <laughs> yeah, he's well decent. But actually, all been a good size, Claire, to be honest. <laughs> My God. It's been a sleepless night to say the least. The action started early for us with Claire catching a scraper 40 pounder, an absolute immaculate carp with great proportions and great autumn colours, a real gem of the lake. We then went on to land another six fish of around 30 pounds, which we just slipped straight back. In fact, last night we managed eight captures in total with every single rod going with the last fish being a very special one indeed. When I first started fishing Lactidaire, I set myself a target of catching a 30 kilo common from this lake. And about an hour ago, I did it. I just can't believe my luck, to be honest. It's been such a struggle, such an epic journey over the years. And for it to all come to fruition on the last night of my trip, on the last session that I'm going to do on this lake for the next few years, I just can't quite believe my luck, to be honest. I'm absolutely blown away, just stoked beyond belief. And to be honest, I'm a bit lost for words. Maybe I'm just going to stop blabbering on now and go show you the fish. Well, this is the first of the two fish we caught from last night and I can't tell you how happy I am. But Samir's got another magical one in the bag for you and I can't wait to show you what he's got. 
Happy times. Cool. Wow. That's a big car up there, isn't it? Look at that. Jesus. <laughs> What a fish. And there it is. Proof that dreams really do come true. When I first started fishing today, I set myself a target of catching a 30 kilo common and today that dream became a reality. Caught from a range of 490 meters on a scopic squid boilie and a tuna and garlic pop up. <sighs> he actually picked up one of my other lines while he was out in open water which then became entangled in my propeller and almost became a complete disaster. But luckily, some quick thinking by me, I was able to land him safely. And there he is. My prize for all my efforts, a goal achieved, and a moment in my angling career shared with my beautiful wife. Thanks, Claire. Love you, babe. Well done. Oh. Oh. What a fish. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> what a fantastic end to a wonderful, wonderful journey. Experiencing the lows is what makes the highs feel so high and a stark reminder of why we all love carp fishing so much. <laughs>